So we're doing a CalIT um, collaboration between um, Jeannie Huang, who is a, a physician at the Radies Children's Hospital, but also at CalIT, and um, the Machine Perception Lab, which is on the sixth floor, and we work on um, developing perceptual primitives so that uh, machines can interact more socially with human beings. There we go. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I'm not technically things, although I've been sitting in front of computers every day of my life since 1982 about. <clears throat> okay. So just to go over the names, Jeannie Huang uh, and uh, Ma Marnie Bartlett and myself both belong in the Machine Perception Lab. What do we do in the Machine Perception Lab? Um, so I said my bit about the perceptual primitives and so what that means is that we're going to use machine learning to learn to train a, a computer vision system to detect and track faces features within the faces so that we can recognize facial expressions head positions um, and and um, speech patterns so this is going to be about the facial expressions and um, facial expression recognition technology has advanced to the point that real-time applications are feasible. Machine Perception Lab came out with um, CERT a few years ago, which was one of the first and hardiest of these systems. Um, so the Computer Expression Recognition Toolbox, soon to be renamed Affect, um, gives you information about basic emotions and also individual muscle movements from the um, Ekman facial action coding system and as well as uh, uh, some extras like head pose, gender, glasses and so on. So th these are some examples of what the FAC uh, system looks like. So the top left hand picture is an AU1 in her eyebrows raised. The second one is an AU5, eyes widened. The third one is a rigorous 12, which is a smile, and the fourth one is AU18. So there's codes for, for every single group of muscles that move, and so it's an uh, objective way of labeling faces so that you can get some access to the more subjective emotional stuff. Um, and this is what the GUI for our system looks like. There was a live demo up on the sixth floor, and if there's time during question time, I'll do one, but I'm going to just give you a picture of this little seven-year-old girl who's doing one of our experiments on grappling and expressions to do with problem solving in children. And did you see how she wrinkled her nose up? Well, if I pause for a moment, well, oh, no, I can't pause. <laughs> there's, there's an action unit nine. Do you see my cursor? So there should be, um, you should be able to see action unit nine and that, there we go, nose wrinkle. You see how, how the intensity goes up when she, when she wrinkled up her nose and there should be an AU4 in there. Here we go, AU4 wrinkled up at the same time. So those are characteristic thinking kind of expressions. Huh? She's, she's searching for the word that describes a mystery object. Here are a, a small handful of the applications that we've been w working on so far. So I don't know if you're familiar with Smile Shutter in the Sony camera. So we developed the prototype for that. Um, we work with Homeland Security or dead on uh, how to uh, how to have more informed um, screening at airports. We, uh, this this project's actually really fun. It's a drowsiness detection for drivers, and when you stop yawning is when you're about to crash. And so it's more complicated than just the fact that you you might look for yawning or or slumping. And in fact, it's very dynamic the signal that someone's really falling asleep it has to do with how their body and head move with the steering wheel. So that's a, a fun project. This is adaptive tutoring systems, which is what we're hopefully going to be apl applying ourselves to furiously in the next few years. So the idea is to have a, a system that, in this particular case, slows down when someone's confused. But it would also be nice to have, for the younger children, a more emotionally responsive tutoring system. Then, in collaboration with, with some people in... New York and Vancouver, um, developing a, a system for intervention for children with autism. And autistic children love to play with computers. And 
what they need to learn is how to recognize facial expressions that are easy for us to recognize so you can train them to recognize them but can they produce them and they you really need to have the the production and the perception so that you can make the link so because we have cameras we can make sure that they're making the right faces and then uh, anyone who's been around Cal IT probably knows about Ruby the social robot of Javier's up on the sixth floor um, and pain so this is a non-clinical um, study that we did a couple of years ago. The data was recorded well before that, but by Kangley in Toronto. But um, I want you to watch this guy carefully in these two competing videos, one of which is real pain and one of which is fake pain in a lab setting. And here's the second one. Now, being a, a mature audience you probably might be slightly better at this task than the naive subjects, but who thinks the left-hand one is the real pain? Who thinks the right-hand one's a real pain? Ah, it worked better than I thought. <laughs> um, so, uh, actually the left-hand one was the real pain, and naive subjects get uh, basically close to chance. Um, we had a system that, that gets um, um, high 80s performance on fake versus real pain under these circumstances. So um, they are very naive actors. <laughs> if you had someone who's very good at acting, you know that would be that would be different. So how did we do that? We took the CERT system. Anyone who hangs around in Kalati will recognise this person, Jake Whitehill. <laughs> and what I have here is a, a clip from Jake during a fake pain and real pain of the same experiment. And the three different colors represent three different actions, and they're the same three actions for both pictures. Even though we've got 50 to choose from, we chose the corrugator, which is um, your brows knitting together, the eye narrow, and the nose wrinkle. And the three actions appear in both clips, but the dynamics are different. So we know that we, that's what we're going to have to look at. So if you just look at the counts of particular actions or the average values of them and such like, you're not going to find any difference. So what we do is we take the third outputs, which are the intensities, the, the, the estimate of intensities of, of each action. We feed them through some temporal Gabor filters, integrate the, over events, throw it into a bag of temporal features, train a classifier on it, and we get our real pain versus fake pain system, which performs better than we expected because we were trying to to get as good as the best humans, which are 73%, and we got 88 or 77, depending which system you look at. Um, so here comes the CalIT serendipity sixth floor story. So nanotechnology moved into the second floor. We got bumped to the sixth floor. Dr. Kevin Patrick had to walk through our lab to get to his office, so he talked to Marnie, and he introduced Marnie to Jeannie, and the project was born. So now we go, we're going to go from real pain to clinical pain, and um, the issue is that it's really hard to assess pain intensity. The way that it's done is you show people a, a chart with, with funny expressions on, and you say, which one is you? Um, and so we want to do better than that um, and find something that at least has consistent agreement and the reasons for this are that if you have good pain management the, the patient is happier medication use goes down the length of the hospital stay goes down so the promise is that because because of the recent advances in automated facial expression recognition we can use this to do clinical research, assessment, intervention systems. And it, it's, it's high time because five years ago, um, there, there, weren't, there weren't that many systems besides ours around for doing this. Now there's a whole bunch of them. The objectives of this specific study is to collect a data set of 10 subjects, preferably 12. You have to get permission from a, a sick teen and their family, so it's not necessarily easy. Um, and to look at different levels of pain within a particular subject and see 
um, how that how that uh, is characterized and and to analyze this using our facial expression recognition system. The target population um, would be children with pancreatitis, which is a very f uh, painful um, infection, but it's curable. And um, so what happens is you get hospitalized, you, you get morphine drips, and, and after several days, you're better, or you know, some people have to stay longer depending on the acuteness of their, of their condition. So we're going to collect data on admission, on hospital day one, et cetera, until discharge. As we have a discharge interview where we ask them how they feel about things and uh, do a bunch more other kinds of questions. And so here's just a flavor of what the data looks like. So this is one of the subjects. We only have four so far. And the condition is the, the patient is lying in the bed and, and the physician comes in and presses on their stomach to see where the pain is worst and um, Daniela runs behind her filming the person's face and um, this, is a, this is a plot of just one action unit um, and it's the, the one that I've been talking about quite a bit so you know it by now, the, the corrugator muscle. And this, this is a kind of normalized CERT output, intensity output with um, a, Z, a Z score that based on that particular subject. And you'll see that before the, the pressure is exerted on the stomach, um, there's a particular level of, of intensity for this action unit, and then it, it, it spikes up after that. Whereas on day three, there's pressure, and although there are uh, all kinds of noisy things going on there, this big spike has disappeared. Um, now, if this really were the beginning and end of it, there wouldn't be a project. <laughs> it's, it's much harder than, than this one example illustrates. So we would have to look at multiple action units and, and study the, the course of the pain medicine and uh, be able to see that, that results carry through from one subject to another over gender and so on. And that's what we hope to be doing in the near future. And that's the end, I think. Yeah. So while you're thinking of any questions you might want to ask, I'm going to st start out my demo. Questions? So this must have be a fun topic working children in pain. Um, so so there, there are some projects where I have to spend a lot of time looking at the video. <laughs> in this particular one, it comes chunked up according to what the physician's doing or the questions that they're asking. So actually, don't look at the video. I might, I might eyeball it to make sure something weird isn't happening, but, but mostly I just look at the output data. So it's all, it's all sanitized for my, for my well-being. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run my, the CERT demo. So this is um, an old... Yeah, this is, an, uh, it, this is just for people who didn't make it up to the to the sixth floor. So you see how there's a box around my face? It's f this is a frontal view only system, so it's only going to catch me when I'm looking forward. But what I really want to show you, let me make my face smaller, is, you know, if I do a couple of action units, can you see that in the trace? So, um, yeah, those are different actions. And, and I'm, I'm actually just looking at this action unit five here. Can you see it going when I widen my eyes? Should be going up and down. Now, this this one's an easy one. The lip corner pull. Yeah, the chin raiser. The chin raiser's not hard to do either. So if I just small those a little bit. Um, I have a I have a rather high base rate for chin for chin wrinkle being uh -huh. a wrinkly chinned person. but I can make it go up and down a little bit. Okay, it's a very noisy signal, but when you do all kinds of filters and stats on it, you can get useful stuff out of it, and it's uh, fairly effortless. Yes?
Oh, yeah, and it's not, it's, I mean, they, they always follow the Ekman code because it's just saying what muscles are moving, but they might not corrugate their brow when they're in pain. Yeah, yeah. So, so yes, there will be, there's always huge individual variation. And so one of the things that, uh, uh, AU4 is, is often associated with pain in the literature, but if you get people to act pain, to fake pain versus, versus actually genuinely be in pain and you look at the average AU4, it's in fact higher in the faking than the real. So this is a problem. So, so you have to look at how well coordinated the action units are with one another. Um, and, and I think that in this task, you, you, you would have to baseline well. In any previous studies, I've just had a lot of subjects and a tiny little snippet from each and now I'm going to have the same subject for days on end you know maybe maybe a couple of minutes of video a day so that's a lot of video and so I'll be able to do within subject studies and one of the jobs will be to characterize um, how different facial expressions might be across that particular population mm -hmm. yes yes Um, it would be one thing I looked at, but in the previous studies, I didn't find that for that particular setup. Actually, what I found was it was the variance, the variability of the gaps between expressions that, that was different between fake and real. So that's kind of weird and, and, and derivative. But um, So one way of saying it is, is when people are faking pain, they kind of... Their, their brain is, is telling them to, to do it, so they, you know, on a regular basis. So every now and then they go, oh, oh. <laughs> Whereas when they're really in pain, the, the spacing is more randomized. Um, but this, this study is different um, because nobody's faking. It's real. Um, and and they're, they're in pain before the physician walks up and whacks them in the stomach. I oh, know, not whacking them before they gently touch them in the stomach. <laughs> so, um, you know, different people are going to have different reactions. For example, they might see the physician coming into the room and already start having their reaction because they're anticipating having their stomach prodded. Um, but but looking, looking at... at coincidence is, is, is one thing to look at and and looking at whether the actions are ballistic or they're all sort of plateaued is another thing to look for. And uh, any other questions? I'm sorry the more articulate members of the lab weren't here to give the talk.